You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Greetings, fellow travelers through the liturgical year. This is Lisa Davis with another feast day quick take. On the feast of St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas is practically mythological in Catholic circles. One of only 29 doctors of the church, this Dominican of the 13th century is most commonly known for his extraordinary intellect and learning. Even in the secular world, he's lauded as one of the most influential philosophers of his or any other time. His writings were prolific, covering the gamut of theological and philosophical topics ranging from metaphysics, logic, epistemology, and the studies of language, psychology, politics, and natural law, and that is just the beginning. His is one of those hard acts to follow for Catholics trying to save their souls, much less embarking on true sanctity. His learning and accomplishment file him in most minds as one of the most extraordinary of saints. Admire, be amazed, but don't even think of imitating. How could you possibly? For heaven's sake, the man wrote the Summa, the encyclopedia of anything worth knowing. But St. Thomas wasn't holy because he wrote the Summa. He wrote the Summa because he was holy. He was a human contradiction, St. Thomas, probably one of the smartest men to have ever lived. He was also one of the simplest and the most humble. Because he was taciturn and thoughtful, large and physically slow-moving, his fellow students laughingly called him the dumb ox. And Thomas laughed right along with them, as self-deprecating as they come, because he saw these truths in himself. The definition of humility being the acknowledgement of truth, however, Thomas didn't always laugh with them. And here's the famous story. St. Thomas was often so wrapped in contemplation of higher things that he became unfocused on the world around him, an unconsciousness that was a source of humor to his fellow Dominicans. In an effort to shake him out of a reverie one afternoon, his fellow monks, smirking amongst themselves, cried, Look out the window! A flying cow! St. Thomas startled for a moment, got up from his chair, and went to the window to look. All his brethren burst into laughter that he'd fallen for the joke, but St. Thomas cut them off mid-chuckle with his response, I would rather be a flying cow than a lying monk. His simplicity may have made him the butt of jokes early on, but it was his greater claim to goodness. It is said his final confession was like that of a five-year-old. Its nature was so simple and innocent. G.K. Chesterton wrote, There is not a single occasion on which he indulged in a sneer. His curiously simple character, his lucid but laborious intellect, could not be better summed up than by saying he did not know how to sneer. Though it might seem that it would be the highest honor to be proclaimed a doctor of the church, St. Thomas's greatest achievement had nothing to do with his intelligence or his writings. His scholarship was good use of the gifts God had given him, but purity and humility were his claims to sanctity, and the reason he is known as the angelic doctor. About a year before his death in 1274, our Lord appeared to St. Thomas, and seeming to bestow the highest praise for his life's work, said, Thou hast written well of me, Thomas. Can you imagine? Then our Lord asked him, What reward wouldst thou have? St. Thomas answered, Nothing but thyself, Lord. Later in the confessional, St. Thomas revealed the vision to his confessor, Father Reginald Piperno, telling him that he had resolved to never write again. Aghast, Father Paperno tried to convince him otherwise, but St. Thomas was resolute. I can do no more, he said. Such secrets have been revealed to me that all I have written now appears to be of little value. We can't know, but perhaps he discovered what St. Therese, St. Gabriel Pacenti, and St. John Riviani, and so many other simple saints knew that all the scholarship in the world can't define love. And that's what Christianity is all about. That's what the Catholic life is all about. What all the thousands of words written by St. Thomas Aquinas are meant to lead us to. We cannot underestimate the influence of Thomas's writings on Catholic philosophy, but you know, there is no record of our Lord reading or writing a book. He is the book. We will never know what vision St. Thomas was given. He never told anyone. But don't you wonder 
if it wasn't just Christ himself? Did St. Thomas realize that the most eloquent words ever written couldn't even come close to the whole point of God's love for us? St. Thomas is the patron saint of scholars and teachers, and rightly so, but it wasn't St. Thomas's writings that impressed Christ. It was his response to the question, What reward wouldst thou have? And St. Thomas's answer, All I want is you. St. Thomas, patron of Catholic schools, of scholars, booksellers, of the virtue of chastity, and protector against lightning storms, pray for us. This is Lisa, signing off. You've been listening to the Catholic Family Podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. You can support the production on Patreon and PayPal, and you can reach Kevin at kevin89davis at gmail.com. Ad maiorem de gloriam. All for the greater glory of God.